All right, so recording is finished. Welcome everybody to the community meeting for KCP, June 14th, 2022. And we have a couple of demos, although it looks like summer is coming, so people are not here, smaller numbers than usual. Let me start sharing. All right, I think you can see it. Yeah. So we have the usual topics. We have the planning uh, topic about the epics. I will move that to the end. Same for the incoming issues. And before that, we have at least two demos. Um, maybe we start with Steve's shout out. Call for feedback. Sure. Um, basically, we in the background, we are currently thinking through um, cluster workspace types and how how do users use them? <laughs> how do you do something with them? Um, today, we've got the org team and universal types that are kind of you know in there. They do one thing. We're trying to take away some of the hard coding and make this a little bit more user friendly. So if you have thoughts on you know either I've got this structure I want to create in KCP, you know my organization looks like this or I want to do this particular thing with the workspace and I'd like a type to help me do that. Um, give a shout on Slack, read through the doc, uh, give feedback. We're just kind of gathering information right now. That's all. Cool, thanks. All right, then let's move to the next topic. Um, Joachim, are you ready to demo something? Yes. Let me just take over the screen. screen. Um, Let me know if you can read. Well, this one is just, I have KCP running, so let's focus on this one. You can read it well. It's, yeah? Yes. Okay. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is something that was um, hidden behind a feature gate on the sinker, which is basically uh, the ability to add virtual finalizers to the sinker. Also now the sinker will add a finalizer upstream. So let's take a look. Okay, I have a kind cluster running. So what I'm going to do is uh, create uh, a workspace, testing and enter, uh, sorry. Okay, so now we are on the testing workspace. What I want to do now is to basically, um, I will create a workload cluster, okay? So I will uh, create a workload cluster, cluster one, and this is the sinker image. I will apply that into my kind, kind cluster, okay? So now we should get workload clusters. We have cluster one, let's see, it's ready. So let's move on. What I'm going to do is to create a deployment that I have already here. Sorry, that I have already here is the test deployment, nothing special about it. Just we need some resource to showcase those new sinkers. And now let's check the deployments. So it's created. It's already re it's it's ready, so it has been sync downstream into my cluster one. So checking the the object itself, you will see that now we have a finalizer, which is a standard Kubernetes finalizer. So the sinker on the cluster one is kind of signaling its ownership. So this object has been seeing downstream 
and it has this finalizer because we have the state internal blah blah who tells the cluster one to sync the object okay so this is the new thing so now if we try to delete the deployment we will see that uh, nothing stops us from doing that so it's gone but now let's apply the deployment again and let me show you a new way for this virtual finalizer is per location so it's an annotation that you can set to block the deletion of an of the object in a location and this is meant to be used by by external controllers as a back pressure mechanism so let me show i will here so i will annotate the deployment sinker test with this annotation the annotation is finalizers dot workloads dot kcp dot dev slash the uh, workload cluster name okay and here you can actually set whatever you want in the um well testing okay so we can set now is annotated so let's check the deployment so you will see same as before finalizers are set but in this case we have this finalizers annotation with testing um this finalizer annotation supports comma separated values i mean so you can have multiple external controllers adding different virtual finalizers so now if we try to delete if we try to delete the deployment as you see it just basically hangs here if we list the deployment you will see that um we have the deletion timestamp of the object we will propagate that deletion timestamp into a new annotation which is the deletion internal workload kcp for that given location so that's how the sinker now knows that it needs to actually delete the object the sinker looks for this deletion timestamp not the global uh, deletion timestamp of the object but the sinker is not deleting the object downstream in the physical in the workload cluster because uh, we have this final virtual final finalizer set so basically um what we can do right now it's uh to delete the to set the annotation to empty uh, sorry over over white and now we'll see that the deployment is gone from the from the workload cluster just this is enabled by default in kcp main so just take that into account that now there are finalizers and those can you can change the behavior and block the deletion of an object using that virtual finalizer that's it for me very cool great um can i ask a stupid question here why why, why do we need different finalizers than the regular ones okay that's a good one um those virtual finalizers are per location so what we are trying to do is when the scheduler supports multiple locations and you can set uh one resource deployed into two different physical clusters what we will do is allow the user even to do a failover and some this is meant for some use cases of external controllers like an ingress controller which wants to handle and apply back pressure to be able to uh, wait until one place has been taken down or wait until the new place has set up properly the new host name so they can do for example the the failover thank you
not sure anybody is here from the storage team. Um, the re recording we will publish, so maybe it's worth to tag them in Slack. So this is especially interested, in, interesting for them, and of course for Ingress, as you said. So we should spread that a bit more, maybe cut out the video or something. I, I really like it, it was really good. All right, so let's continue. Let's have another very short demo, not as polished and advanced as your games, but anyway. You saw the picture of the um, colorful output already. I just want to say some words about that. So we are trying, I mean, the big epic is sharding. Um, and sharding means you have to install some something locally if you want to develop. So the idea is that we get a second test server. So basically like the, the, the original one we have already, but now sharded test server. And it will, at the moment it launches the front proxy and one shard because we are not there yet. In the future, there will be a parameter where you can scale up and, and down, so you can run a free shard cluster, for example, um, plus a font proxy. And this command does everything around plumbing itself, like all the certificate uh, magic, which must be done, like uh, we need a request header cert, we need serving certs, and everything must fit together. So it's quite a bit of plumbing. And this is just hidden from, from, from the user, from the developer when he uses this command. Eventually, this will move into CI, hopefully, hopefully in the sprint, in this uh, prototype, at least the one shard option that we can run that all the time. At the moment, the front proxy is pretty much untested, I think. So this is really new. Um, yeah, you have seen the picture already. So if I run that, it's compiling, go run. So there are multiple um, kinds of parameters or flags. The ones which are not uh, prefixed are for the test server, and those which minus minus proxy are for the front proxy, and the minus minus shard ones are passed to the shards. So you can customize all those components, all three components. And yeah, it does crypto magic here, so creating CAs and certs and so on. Eventually, it will launch the KCP0. KCP0 is the root, so we will have one singleton basically in the cluster. Um, that will host the root workspace and we have to pass around, at least at the moment, have to pass around the kubeconfig to access that because this is basically the, the source for all cluster workspace shard objects. So every other shard has to connect to that to get this data. Eventually this will change probably and we will replicate and all this stuff, but for the moment it's as simple as that. So KCP0 starts, everything blue is KCP0. And when it's ready, after some lines, you see some, some readiness checks. So there's some weight implemented, obviously. And uh, when it's ready, the green one, that's a proxy, will be started. And this command, I mean, one advantage is you can just say Control C and it's gone. So uh, all processes are, uh, are killed, so nothing to kill manually, pretty convenient. And where this is at the moment, so you can, you can talk to it. It creates the usual um, admin config we know. So it looks like KCP start from the outside, but does of course all this process, uh, process magic. Um, KCP admin cube config can be used. So as, as normal, same context. And if I try and everything works, we are default as usual, and you can say the usual thing. So you can ask for country maps, for example, but there are none, so this works and everything else should work as well. Um, tests are not green yet, so there's still work to be done, but um, you can at least do simple commands. This is fine, so it works. All right, so this command is just next to the other one in CMD, and um, yeah, hopefully we will run that in CI, as I said. All right, that's a demo. Questions, comments? And somebody or some people ask you, of course, um, the command creates proc, uh, log files per, com uh, per, com per component. They are not colored, so just pure text files. Uh, it's just on the screen to, uh, to understand when one command throws errors and the other is fine or something like that. 
already with two commands, it's pretty hard to really understand what's going on if there is no color and no, no prefix involved. And of course, if you pipe that through a command like that, then color also goes away. So that's it. Questions, comments? So um, maybe one question, Steve, that this is for you. Um, the sharded, not the sharded, the shared server, we want to move to Pro, I guess. Has there been any work in this direction? If yes, I would try to take that and add another case. If not, I would continue scripting. No, I haven't done anything yet. Okay. Those two should be pretty similar. Like this should also use kind. So I want I want shared server and sharded shared server basically as the CI targets. Any reason to split them apart? Into two commands? Like when do um, we want shared but not sharded in the future? Um, yeah, we have to test the KCP start as well. So at least we have to run two jobs, I think. Otherwise, we okay. risk to re uh, regress. Makes it sense. could be the same command, but um, the test server command is pretty simple at the moment. I think it's not good to combine them in one binary. I started with that. I didn't like it. I split them up. Yeah, I just didn't know if the... Uh... if we'd be getting more um, test coverage from it. Like if I the sharded setup those... would be a superset. Yeah, I mean, the, the CI job should look basically the same, just starting a different command, of course. So let's reuse all the kind code. But I would run both for the reasons given. All right. So no further questions. Let me switch over. Okay, so there are no new topics. Does anybody want to talk about a topic or present something? That's not the case, last chance. Otherwise we go to the boring prototype six planning and design topic. So just as a overview for everybody. So we have a couple of topics. I mean, we discussed that before last week. The sharding topic we just mentioned. We have API export permissions. We have cluster workspace type take two. That's a topic Steve pointed out. We want uh, we want feedback for that. We have user home workspaces. David is on that. We have quota. I promoted that to an epic. I guess it's big enough. So the, uh, Andy is on that. We have multi workspace controller development. I don't think there's anybody anything um, planned for prototype six at the moment so i will talk to andy whether this is, this is actually part of v6 06 and the last one consume compute via transparent multi-cluster um, that's mostly placement i guess plus fix ups and bug fixes and so on yeah this is placement all of them have, as far as I have seen, I asked uh, on Slack most, uh, nearly all have uh, yeah, a line for prototype six plus, plus stretch goals. If that's not the case, please try to add that. If it's hard to put the line, it's probably a sign that uh, the stories or the action items need more work. All right, that are all the epics. I think we are fine here. Anything we should talk about? Anything which is not clear, both technical 
also planning wise. All right, the other thing, um, yeah, I go to the milestone first. The milestone is pretty big. I try to move out those which have no name, so which don't have an assignee. So what we have left is basically the, the flake here, which happens once in a while, but I'm not sure it's so painful at the moment. So if anybody wants to look into that, that's highly welcome, please do. And the second thing, this is about GBR creation. Basically it's, yeah, on the one hand, we want to change the system CRDs into API bindings. I think we have another issue. I'm not sure why that's why it's not uh, assigned to 06. But turning system CRDs as much as possible into API, API bindings, that's one part. And the other is some admission. Um, I'm not sure we have any, I think it's still open, but somebody is here who knows better. Please correct me. So it's still in 06 and it's some person here, some avatar working on it. So we talked about it last time as well. So if you look for work, that's, that's a good one. All right, I think this is pretty empty. No assignee. Those two, which you just talked about, that's good. And blockers. Most are epics. Is there anything else in epics or do we have? No, I haven't. Yeah, here's one non-epic uh, plus a revert here. So if there is a name or your name behind, like your, your picture behind, those are blockers. So if we don't get them done, um, I mean, the consequence is that we might delay the release, obviously. Mm -hmm. Please double check that there's really a plan to finish them. Otherwise we should, should move them out, at least uh, remove the blocker label. Is there anybody here um, for the code generation? I don't think we have anybody. I don't think. And the other one, um, David, are you on those where your picture is behind? That one especially here? Uh, yeah, but but uh, that one is, is I answered your question. I think it's, it's okay. already... Um, didn't I? Um, close. No, you forgot okay, I thought I had closed it. Okay, just go ahead. If it's done, yeah. it's perfect. Things yeah. you are, and then we have one less on the list. And the others are epics, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. All right. Then I think we have everything about 06. Is everybody set to start working or is already working? Now is a chance to ask, to discuss topics. If that's not the case, we have the usual routine. There are not so many actually. Okay, first one, I also saw that. Steve? Uh, it's probably something simple. I don't really know, but certainly somewhere in server startup, we're adding more than one health and readiness check. Okay. Is this new? Uh, I'm we not sure, but we saw you know, I think yesterday as a a git bisect that does KCP start and grips for this duplicate path thing would be pretty okay. easy to do. Let me do that. Okay, so it's help wanted server. So, uh, and I guess it's not a blocker, it doesn't break anything, does it? 
So I would move it to TBD. And obviously it's a bug. Next one, another nice panic. And I saw discussions there already, so maybe one of you can comment. Steve, Anthony. Yeah, um, we, we, it's not really a blocker. We, we just have to use two clients, basically one for creating the, the, the informers, watching for the, the wildcard and doing multiple workspaces. Um, it's just so, yeah, so we, we have to use two clients in the meantime that get fixed. And I think it, it also applies for delete operation. I don't think you, for the same reasons. But it's not a blocker for you because you have a privileged service account, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So, so <laughs> you're right that um, so um, we we have that issue where when we use a restricted setup, it's not entirely clear for us exactly the permission scheme when you use the virtual workspace. Uh, API server. Um, the, so, so what, what we do, what, what we do would have hope is that we could have, like, uh, as a API provider, use the API export virtual workspace URL, and that would enable us to uh, watch over multiple workspaces. But in restricted environment, it does not. We have to. In an environment where we have to create a, you know, service account per workspace, it, it kind of defeats the purpose of using the yeah, yeah. virtual workspace. I, yeah. So I added feature completion. I think we missed that bit in API export virtual workspace, right? So, I mean, you are not blocked, but yeah. it's, really, <laughs> it's lacking. So help wanted. So everybody who wants to look into virtual workspace API servers. I'm not sure how hard it is after Steve's functional registry there. It's probably doable. Yeah, so I think like this particular yeah. bug, I'm actually not sure if I'm surprised that it panics. I think it just shouldn't have an endpoint. And I'm also surprised that he's not able to do discovery, which I feel like are two mm -hmm. separate bugs. And the okay. third bug. We're not the third bug, but the third missing feature is that there is no create. Um, yeah. Because there is no create. I guess just okay, so the labels, so labels are correct, right? It's it's part of that is a bug. Uh, part of that is missing feature. Yeah. But yes. Yeah. So I'd say there's there's three issues here, um, and I can break them out into separate ones. Yeah. Just comment. Comment below. I'll put it into the description so people know. So I would not like to see that slip. So if anybody has cycles, I mean, there are a couple of people who have worked in this area. I would keep it in 0 06. It's painful if we don't have that. It's not complete. Mm -hmm. well, I'm happy to help if you guys give, give me some pointers. And if you think that this is something that I could help. Um, I think you can. Maybe, can you start Slack chat? Uh, sweat with me and with uh, Steve. Yeah, okay, sure. Give you pointers. That's cool. Great. Thank you. So, can I yeah. assign it to you then? All right. Thanks. Cool. Next one. Oh, yeah. This is painful. It's old and painful, but it's re edit. I talked with that uh, with, with Lukash today. So this dynamic discovery shared in format does discovery. Obviously, this is not a good idea to do against all the workspaces because it's polling. And so we have to turn that into probably something API binding aware. 
plus a handful of native resources, which we know anyway. So we don't have to do discovery for them. Mm. So it's a time bomb. Where, where is it used? The, I mean, um, resource uh, controller, workload resource. Oh, scheduler, I think it's the formal name. Mm. And that one, I mean, it is about API bindings, right? Plus a handful of mm. resources. Yeah, I was so asking could... that because I was wondering if it was used in the sinker. But... No, I don't. Where is it? It's resource there, scheduler. There is it's it. the namespace schedule, like the thing yeah. that okay. pushes yeah. stuff yeah. around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. But the Synca is not using that one, right? No, it's in a, a sort of you know another one that probably looks like, but but in the future it would not be necessary anymore uh, with the virtual okay. space because okay. we only expose. Oh, it's about discovery, right? This one starts everything it sees. And the other one is probably a loop over all the resources that should should sync or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But in the future, the one for the sinker would disappear because it's all managed on the virtual workspace side, yeah. which presents only the required resources. So I would say help wanted. Mm -hmm. Not sure which good. That's not exports. Technically, it's used by transparent multi cluster so if this helps. And I would put it to TBD. This will explode eventually just by scale. Okay. Next one. Oh, um, from Joachim's demo. Demo, uh, Joachim, can you create a, an issue about the, the timestamp? It's not. It's not the same format as the one for for the deletion timestamp, it's something which has spaces inside. Okay, okay, good wait. Okay, what about this one? Well, maybe for this one, we should wait for, you know, the, the basic transformation here image because finally it would be the uh, workspace virtual workspace uh, responsibility to uh, remove the sync level if I'm not mistaken okay can you comment yeah and maybe move it to zero seven when we do that when mm -hmm. we want to be reminded yeah thanks Sean, you're here? Yes. Yeah, I, I am. I'm sorry. Can you comment on this bug? Uh, well, it's just an issue yeah, of open work. What is it? Yeah, it's, so it's um, just the work tracking, the getting the API in a reasonable state. Um, OK. The API bindings, accepting and rejecting of permissions claims, but I need to finish. I feel like I need to finish the permission claims for the API export first yeah. before I can get to this one. Just because, like, I want to build them on top of each other rather than uh, so it's thing. It's a stretch goal, right? That's what I understand. Uh, yeah, I think it is okay. a stretch goal. Yeah. Can Can you update uh, the labels and the milestone? We'll do. So if it's a stretch goal, move it to zero seven if you want, or leave it in zero six, doesn't matter much. All right, next one. It's probably the same class of issue. It's the same word. I mean, the same epic. Yeah. Same thing, please update labels and assign E and so on. Yeah, this is one, I'm not sure anybody has looked into that or has experience from former work. Bound service token will be the new normal basically for service accounts. And the question was, um, what does this mean for us for transfer multi-cluster? 
whether so there was the discussion whether kubelet does re, does the renewal or even the initial creation of the token or something like that and client go keeps updating many question marks around that so if somebody is interested in looking into that would be very welcome or if you have knowledge comment please so it's not critical for this release i guess but eventually you should have an idea Next one, CLI command produces junk. No, doesn't produce junk. Doesn't like junk or something like that. Mike, are you still here? Yes, you are. Can you comment? Uh, me? Um, yes, yes. It's your back, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Oh, right. Yeah, I, I have, just haven't had time to get back to this yet. I will. Okay. So let me just move it to TBD and uh, see what was commented. I haven't read it. All right, next one. Oh, I see. Hope if you want to comment, he was here, he's not here anymore, I think. So oh, it's, it's about the roots, especially in the host name, which is limited in size. David or Joachim, do you have an idea? Uh, well, there was there was a comment about uh, if I'm not mistaken uh, in the new document that Joachim uh, created, you know, about the, the um, thinking about the new names for uh, downstream namespaces, and there was a comment about the fact that we should limit the names of the namespaces to avoid um, having you know overflow in the ingress names, oh, which are from ingresses. So, you know, might be related to to the the new naming naming scheme work uh, that you are is doing so it's it's name of the root object minus and then this yeah yeah exactly giant name I see. yeah, yeah. so if we reduce the namespace name we should make it easier okay so it it might be that it would be fixed by by your work you are not find that mistake. i mean if you yeah, can, can you link your doc here i will yeah 1188 so that's good and the, the doc was shared right in slack so everybody please take yes. a look short shorter namespaces much nicer ones okay this is a flake i skipped that um that one oh yes but this is old right Steve, not sure why it turned up again here. Yeah, we could probably just. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, the third proxy that this is referencing will be deleted, but. Yeah, I, I, I resurrected some code of it in my PR about front proxy, about the, the, the shard command. And I just added a. Uh, always 200 ready that which is not an answer to your to your uh, issue here but it's related i would close it yeah it seems reasonable super seeded what's the name i don't know that one i sharded font proxy work so it's a different command because we reuse chris font proxy Yeah, then there are a couple like that, old ones, which 
show up here because Andy was uh, cleaning up. Um, they are kind of part of the sharding epic, so I would put them in TBD. Part of those ideas, they're mostly about ideas and direction, are addressed by the epic. So if you don't want to lose ideas, I think that's fine. TBD feature, which would be a sharding we do. Yeah. Do we have something like that? No. Okay. There's at least one more like that. Another flake. Oh. November 21. This this is your old proxy code, I guess so. Yes. Delete. Okay. Yeah, this one is still open. It's also old, but it's still open. Yeah, but it I mean it would still be necessary either to completely change, you know, the way yeah. negotiation is done or or at least at some point to to refactor that because yeah I think um, this is part of location workspaces basically right because we yes. really think yes probably I mean where the, um, the, the the schemas come from yeah and and the I mean the main point is that we should have a central place to you know, store and and follow the consistency between individual API exports and the negotiated schema. And currently, this yeah, is and, uh, in this logic, this is spread. You know, and all I would, event based, uh, though uh, it should be state based. So that's okay, the main what point. Do we do? That we are just should, missing some corner cases, or there might be hidden bugs. Should we leave it for now, or should we close it? Seems to me that we should leave it because it it still corresponds to a, a need which has not been, you know, fixed and also somehow a risk at least an area where we know that that we might have corner case lying. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Uh, that, that's you know still <laughs> parts of the initial it. uh, bug, right? prototype. Yeah. And maybe if we leave that, that's even time bomb. So we need a solution. Eventually. Yes. Yes. Obviously, it's, it's you know we may uh, you know rest so of the initial prototypes. This is the same. That one. Uh, yes. Obviously. Can you merge those two? Maybe. Uh, yes. One hundred fifty-six and one hundred fifty-eight. Is this Ingress, Joachim, do you remember? Uh, that's, I would say that's the first that's issue Ingress. I open. <laughs> okay. Okay, there's long discussion with Clayton. We can, uh, I don't know, we can keep that to, to keep track or of issues or or we can close that and you know because it's it will be mostly outdated outdated already uh, so. yeah. i would say so it's not gone so you can still see it right yeah so let's close that We nearly have gone down to one. So even lighter weight CID only in Parasoma. So this is still open, but um, we need people to look into that. It's not a good first issue. Like making our API server more reusable. 
if anybody wants to look into that. Every, every time people ask, I, I suggest that they get engaged until now, and nobody has done that, so we'll see. Okay, that's another open topic. Okay, I would put it in TBD. There are still there are things we have to to, to discuss to think through. Identity of service accounts. We we are talking about that even now around authorization. So I will leave that and. That's interesting. That's basically the idea about pots, right? Didn't know there's an issue for that. in your epic or close this one. Let's talk about multi-cluster feature and correct. And I think the last one. Nope. Anybody sees value in keeping that? It's not sure. Okay, let's close that, I think. Very good. So we made it. How many are still there? Three. Oh, this one, yeah. Metric support. Synca is getting more serious. So we want metrics in, yeah, it's help wanted already. That's good. Feature work. And to be. And you are team, you're on that, right? Or you commented already? Yeah, I still need to create the the reworking of the namespaces. Yeah, so okay. I will create an issue for that one yeah. and then link some of those. That's good. Yes, I moved it to TBD, so it's it's gone from the list. Only the flag is here, so this is help wanted. It's probably not a good first issue. It's probably somewhere in the API export code about CLDs and to be done. I don't think it's painful at this moment, so I think we are fine. That's all, I think. We close 132, not today, but in general. So we have 10 minutes, nine minutes left. Any other topic? If not, let's call it a meeting and see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Bye.